This is just a couple things that I did to the RV. Um, this way you can kind of know what was going on with this thing because there's always a problem with this thing constantly. When we were on vacation uh, last time when we were in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, uh, Pigeon Forge, the hot water tank over here uh, was not given. It was given us hot water, but it was given us hot water when it wanted to. I didn't know why or what was going on. And when I had it checked out, it was actually the brain. This thing. Okay, so now that was replaced. And uh, also when we were plugged in, the hot water switch was not working for, um, uh, for when you're plugged in. I'm not talking about the propane one, I'm talking about the electric one. Uh, so that was not working. Uh, and that's fixed now and it works beautiful and everything's good and uh, amen, you know. Also. Okay, this is the Voyager backup system that I have in here. I don't know if the screen's bad or the camera's bad, but I'm gonna start with the camera to see if that's it, and I'll just keep the screen until that goes. Um, I'll turn it on and show you, but the beeping sound in here from the leveling jacks down is gonna be loud, so I am gonna mute that so it doesn't come through your speakers and annoy you as much as it annoys me. So this is the uh, backup camera here. And we're gonna replace that one right there. Guy says the wires are really in there, so you just gotta pull them out. And then you can connect it and then reinstall it. Yeah, we'll see how it works out. So here I am still with this situation with the camera. Uh, <laughs> I took the camera out problem was the end piece of the camera got stuck inside the hole so uh, I can't make a bigger hole there because it will mess everything up with the gasket and everything so I was told to actually take one of these out stick a camera down there and see if I can find it that way and then pull it all the way over to here out and then I can install the other camera easy easy but not easy as you think. This has been a complete nightmare. Believe me. I did my first oil change, believe it or not, in my entire life, and I did it for the generator. So I'm not gonna show you the whole oil change, but this is a... Uh, uh, quiet pack 55G. So, anybody has one of those, um, this is what it is. That's a real, it looks like brand new. This thing, it's, it's amazing. 100 hours on it, but anyway, this Fram filter was, uh, it was easy to come off, but when it got down and dropped down to the bottom here. I mean, the little stem that's in there, you got to like kind of turn it and then everything gets all over. So, you got to put something under there crazy I couldn't find how to drain it but this wire right here comes out and then I, I put it into the pan and I drained it that way and I filled it here the dipsticks there you I filled a little bit in here and a little bit in here but I did add uh, oil inside here so when I start it it's not a, a dry start so which is good and that was my first ever oil change probably and definitely not my last Another issue we're having was the uh, there was gear fluid leaking out of the t 
entire area. And I didn't know what to do. So I called a buddy of mine and he said, you can bring it in our shop and it'll cost you 300 or you can order everything online and it'll cost you 70 bucks total, shipping everything. I said, okay, I went with the $70. This was a real easy fix, believe it or not. I'll show you a picture of what it looked like before, but I mean, the oil was everywhere and then, then the sand coming up on it made it really horrible. I'm gonna power wash this anyway to get it better. So I might've filled it a little bit too much over the line a little bit, but I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. I hand tight. I hand tightened this, okay? And just to show you, this is the old one. You can actually see the crack, see the crack? That's where it was leaking from. Pretty wild, huh? But that's what happens with these things. Pretty wild, and it cracks somewhere else, but I can't find it, but that's a big crack, so you can just see why that happened the way it did. And uh, I did that job today also, so I was kind of proud of myself there. So my fans pooped out on me, and uh, I grabbed these off of uh, Amazon. The link is below, and these are really nice fans. And my other ones are just <clears throat> no good. They just won't even turn anymore. <clears throat> They're making a lot of sound, and so time to replace them. Here's the fan all hooked up, very good. And I got one hooked up already, I, I didn't really want to film both. So here's what I'm doing. I'm getting these clip-ons right here. Makes it more simpler and it's easier because I got a small hole up there so I'm able to push them right up and good to go. And um, getting that done and uh, it'll be good. I'll show you what they uh, look like when it's done. I also wanted to add that these were on the fans. And I was going to send them back because I don't need a switch on there because my dash has a high and off and then low switch. And I was better to send these back. And I looked and then I saw the three wires in here because when you initially get it, it has one wire coming out and then a, a negative wire. Just a positive and then a negative. And then I saw the three wires and I had the three wires up there and I said, yep, I can do this. So I took that out. And I can have these switches for something else if I need them. Not bad. All right, they're both on. This one was a pain. I'm actually out of breath. Holding it up. The uh, things kept on sliding out. Oh, I did it 10 times, but finally got it. It's up there nice and tight. It's good. One there. One there. Beautiful. I have one of many projects going on here in the uh, motorhome. I had to uh, uh, redo the TV mount. The main goal, main goal is to make sure it doesn't fall, of course, and it also doesn't uh, rattle. So the last TV they had, which was real easy for them, they put these four bolts in, which are right there. I reused them, and they went right into the TV with it. Crazy, but it was, that TV was able to do it. This TV is not thin. Uh, so I bought this bracket on Amazon and uh, this is it right here. This is the bracket. And the reason why I got this bracket, let me show you in the back here, is because it has the screws. Okay, so when you put it on here and you latch it on here, okay, just to just sit there, the other ones, a lot of other ones have the pull string. This one has a screw to screw it up. The only problem is there's just about this much of a gap between this bracket right here when it goes on, so the screw's like away from it. So here's what I'm gonna do. So I bought I bought these from Home Depot. Okay. That's what they look like. And to get them back there on that bracket, I had to cut them down. I hadn't cut them down. So this is what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna glue it. I'm gonna glue it with the JB Weld. So you apply both of these and they say these things should stick to anything. You have to do that. And I bought the bigger screws. This is the screws it came with. 
but I bought the, the three inch ones, okay? So this way it'll be a lot longer and easier for me if I need to get the TV off. I stick a screwdriver in the back and I'm good to go real easier that way. So let's see how this pans out. Okay, so here's what I did. I just put them on there so I can slide it right onto the um, bracket real quick and then I'll twist them up. So, um, <clears throat> as you can see, it's it's not really all the way on there. A little hard to see, but I didn't twist those um, screws all the way in there. Just so much so I can get them up. I can get them up on there and apply the adhesive so it will stay and then let it dry to four to six hours. Then I'm going to do the oil change on the main engine uh, another day, not today. Um, so tackling a few things in here, I'll, I'm not gonna video every step of the way. You can go on other YouTube channels to see all that. I'll give you the gist of it or how I did it. Uh, unless there's certain things maybe I want to show you what I did. I don't know yet, but uh, I'm tinkering. When you got an RV, it's just too expensive. It's way too expensive to maintain these things. So you got to learn. You have to learn yourself. Because if you don't learn, you're going to spend a lot of money. Unless you got a lot of money, you don't care. That's up to you. But I don't have a lot of money to do all that. And I'd rather learn how to do it myself anyway, because if I get into a pinch, something happens, this way I'm good to go. I know everything that's going on, which is a win-win, kids.